Where are you going? Don't you love when you buy a plant on clearance, stick it in a pot, and then three years later go, why did I do that? This was a terrible idea. Now I have to get it out of this container, this very fragile container. You know, if you put too much pressure on anywhere along the sides of the pot, the whole thing's just going to break. This was so stupid for a $15 shrub. A beautiful shrub. I love this shrub. This is a limelight hydrangea. And there are plenty of other spots that I could have put this thing. It's the smart places I could have put it, actually, but I didn't do that. No, I put it here in this very big pot that I know where if you barely touch it, the whole thing's just going to crumble to pieces. Why do I do the things that I do? Oh, did I get it? Is it done? Finally. Not a lot left on there, but it's a hydrangea. It's going to be fine. Okay, got that done. Can finally move on with some other things. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. Is everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Still very gloomy, very, very rainy, misty. So I have to start the video off with the phone because it's like water resistant, you know? Not my favorite thing to do. Not the best filming quality, but got to get stuff done in between the storms. Let's switch over to the better camera later, hopefully, if the, if the weather ever lets up. Don't know if it will. This big, beautiful, I mean, I think it's beautiful. It's very aged gigantic urn here i talked about this when i was doing a bunch of cleaning and rearranging out here this is a pot that is very fragile i tried to move it a few years ago and like barely touched it and a giant chunk came off and i got it glued back on there so it's been sitting in the same spot kind of over in this vicinity for i don't what feels like forever it hasn't been forever i will say six years but i don't i don't want it over here anymore i'm trying to clear out this area so that there's more We've talked about it. Once upon a time, this was planted up with a ton of Eastern prickly pear, Eastern opuntias. They were the type that had a very small pad on them and they laid, so they came over and trailed over the front and they would get covered in these beautiful like magenta flowers. In the springtime, it was stunning. And then I had a yucca in the corner and I don't, there was something else in there. I don't remember, it doesn't matter. That's all gone now. The sun went away from where I had this, the trees grew. So I had to pull that out and I wanted to pull it out anyways because those apuntias, they have what are called glockids. They're like fiberglass type needles on them that blow in the wind. And that didn't work out well when there were places to sit over the place down here. So if you were to sit within like 15 feet of this thing, you'd be covered in these little fiberglass things. If you've ever had them in your fingers or in your skin, they're not fun. So I stuck a hydrangea that I found on Clarence in it a few years ago. That's the end of that story. I got that pot cleared out as you just saw, and I was thinking I may put it over here somewhere. I'm gonna need to pull some things out, do some rearranging. We talked about that in the last video. Don't worry about it, it'll be fine. I still have a lot of small plants in my grow space that I need to move out, and hopefully I'll be able to do that towards the end of this video. A lot of those plants will likely be in this spot over here. So I thought I'd just pick up the camera and just get to work, basically pulling some things out, doing some rearranging, and uh, basically stage the spot for getting houseplants put in here. I'll probably drop some annuals into some planters and just, you know, try and make this look better. I don't think it's going to be a drastic change, but I don't know. we will see. Because this time of year, the plants come out and hang out more on this end of the patio here because it's where it's shady and they need to be hardened off into the sunlight, right? You can't just go throwing them into the sunlight, they'll bleach out and burn. It will probably end up being fairly crowded here, but then in a few weeks it'll slowly get thinned out as I can move more plants into other areas of the patio where there's more sunlight. I've been in one of those moods where I'm just like, I want to work and just started doing stuff. I've just taken on a project and realized that I don't really know where to start here. Because I think what I want to do with this space won't actually fit in this space. Like I would like to open this wall up more and still use it to store lots, not store, but to display lots of plants. But I don't think that's going to happen. That doesn't make any sense. Have all this gravel down here that I don't know what to do. I mean, I know what I need to do with it. It needs to be spread over here, but there's still a lot of leaf and litter debris over there that needs to be cleaned up. I keep going in about twice a week, but it's just, it's all wet. So there's no point in messing with that right now when it's all wet, right? I'll just move it. That's a good place to start. And I think I'm actually going to need probably three or four of those for each one of those pots because they, they're going to need a lot of weight in them. So I don't want those blown over. I guess that'd be a good enough place to start. Just pick things up and get them moved. Whew, that's better. So some gravel to clean up, one bag left over here. I moved the rest down into a pile over there. I figure if I kept them like just sort of pinched together in that spot, then I can still get the debris cleaned up around them. And then when it's time to get the rest of the stuff cleaned up, I can just put, 
poot. I can scoot that out of the way. You get this stuff cleaned up that's underneath. I'll get it spread out at some point when it's clean enough over there. That bag doesn't really need to be over here, but there was a centipede underneath it. And if, you, if you, you're new to the channel, it's a little something about me. I don't mess with centipedes. I'm good with bugs, spiders, scorpions. Like they don't bug me. I'm, we're good. Centipedes? No, absolutely not. They're the only bugs where almost every single time I see one, I get bit. I'm looking at this Prince of Orange, just loving the leaves on it, but I think I need to repot. I don't need to worry about that right now, but I need to make sure that that gets done at some point. I'll probably need to make a cut right around in here somewhere because it has some new growth starting to come out. So I may just like cut it, leave this, and then prop that into a new pot. That might be how I have to do it. That or get a longer planter and lay it down and let it take root and maybe sprout up from the sides. I don't know if the Prince of Orange, that's not usually how I've ever grown them. Oh, that just poured water all over my feet. I need some of those waterproof, what are they, the Vessies? Not the most attractive shoes, but they seem very practical for outside people, for us gardeners and nature lovers, because the wet, not into wet feet. Not into wet feet or centipedes. Y'all learned a lot about me. Got the pot scooted over, moved those tables. Y'all just saw me do that. The whole reason I was doing that really is I just kind of started moving, didn't really talk about what was going on. So I think I kind of want to pull the glider down just a little bit over this direction so that this end of this wall isn't hidden as much behind there. I may end up just pushing it back, who knows, but may as well see what it looks like. Cause it's not that hard to move though. It's been in this spot for a long time. So it might not be that easy. It's probably somewhat settled into the ground there. Yeah, this is gonna take two hands. Ooh, I don't think I like that. I know the glider's dirty. It needs a good scrubbing and everything. That's not, it's just like algae and stuff. That doesn't make it better. It's still gross, even if it's algae. I don't know, I don't like it. I don't know why, I just don't. I think part of it's because the it somewhat blocks the path here, but that's not a big deal. This thing, you just scoot it. Very flexible, so that's not a big deal. And that's there mostly for the dogs anyways who don't even really use it, though I wish they would. When I have it cleared out, they're better about using it. And then I have these pots here that I need to move, so maybe that would make it look better. I like the way this part looks much more, minus, you know, the dolly and the pots being in disarray. That is better. I was actually thinking, I'm not gonna do this right now, but I was thinking that I may like this glider more if it were down over there, kind of where the iguana enclosure is. So I would have to scoot the iguana enclosure. There's a lot of pottery sitting over there. You know, we'll just go over there. Sometimes I talk and talk and talk and realize that it'd be easier just to walk down over there so I can show y'all what I mean. Problem is I'm trying to avoid showing too many plants because there are some things that I'm trying to keep hidden away till the next video for the plant hall plant hall keep mixing up plant tour and plant hall there will be a large queen palm that goes right here and then that's a broken pot that won't be here this pot that's right here is going to have a mule palm which is that transplanted into it and put elsewhere although i kind of like it here so the idea of moving the glider over here basically only works if i don't have any of this stuff right here the iguana cage can stay it needs to be over in this spot but it's a big glider it has a really big footprint on it. Well, what do I think about the glider from down? Oh, you know what? From down here, you can barely even tell that I moved it. Maybe if I were to kind of angle it back that direction a little bit more and just bring it this way, I'm gonna keep playing with it. I'm gonna make it work. That's not so bad over there, but I just, now I'm kind of like an idea of the glider over here because it's near like the common seating area and it might be sort of nice to have that. I think I'd sit in it a lot more. I do like it down there. The mosquitoes get absolutely awful down on that end of the yard around like June or so. Sorry, we don't need to worry about that right now. I just need to get the potted stuff taken care of so we can get the plants moved over there. This did open up a lot of space right here. I can't do anything about that pipe. Actually, I think I need to dig that back down that has a cap that goes on it right here. See that? That's supposed to be right there. But the ground squirrels, chipmunks, ground squirrels, are not the same thing. They look the same. So just for reference, they look like chipmunks. They live in there. I wish they didn't, but they do. I'm not going to destroy their lives by like adhering the cap to that pipe. So it, this, it's been that way for years. They can just, they can have it. They can have the tube. It's fine. I'm sure they've packed that French drain full of all kinds of junk by now. That's totally ruined it. It's been years. So it's just a little bit too late to start acting on that now. Some of this pottery is going to stay over here. Some of that I'm going to move to the driveway. I've cleared out an area in the driveway that I'll show in a different video when I get the area potted up to basically have pots set on each side of the gate when you walk into the backyard. I guess I can show you sort of from this direction on each side. Because I do have a 
fair amount of plants, not as many as I used to, but a decent amount of plants that are toxic that I don't want in the backyard because of the dogs, mostly because of Turbo, he's really young. I'm still learning about plants like the oleander. I actually ended up getting rid of my sago palms last year because it just wasn't worth the risk to me. So the super, super toxic stuff will be in the driveway where the dogs can't get to them. And I'm going to arrange pots on each side of the gate and have the peach trees over there to these peach trees, those. Those will go over there. So some of these pots I'm gonna keep over here and then some I'm going to move over there. And I also, this whole area up here has just sort of become a breeding ground for the wild strawberries, which is fine. The rabbits enjoy them, but the rabbits don't hang out in the backyard that much anymore with the dogs. So I was thinking maybe, I don't know if I wanna do this right now, cause it's gonna involve a lot of digging and the ground's super muddy and it's probably going to be for a while cause we've had so much rain. But I have these big like, ball kind of shaped planters really big boy ones they're over by the hot tub i'm not going to show them to you right now because it's a disaster over there but i have enough that i could do like one two three four five i have six and i think i promised two of them to someone else so i have four so one two that might look nice as long as they were leveled out right not too messy the thing with pottery is that if you get too much in one spot just speaking from experience here you've seen it here on the channel before it can get looking really cluttered and just messy. If you hadn't noticed this year, I'm trying to keep things more clean and tidy. So uh, I don't want too much in one spot, but that's gonna be hard to avoid when there's all these houseplants to move outside, right? They gotta go somewhere. So uh, this big blue pot, that one, I like it over here. So I think I'm gonna pull the hookahs out of that and put them in a different planter. I'll show you this planter right here. Okay, it got wonky. It was level at one point. This was a pot that was, I don't, I don't know if I actually talked about it, but when I was cleaning up everything down over here several videos ago, this was in the pile of pots. That I was like, I gotta figure out what to do with these. The bottom of this one is completely broken. There's no bottom, it's just an outer shell. It's just sides. I put it over here. I dug the ground out a little bit and I've been putting potting soil in there. And even though it's not level, I'll need to fix that. I think the hookahs would be kind of pretty right there. Do you think that might look nice? I'm also just noticing that my Lespedeza has spread into a whole new spot. That's new. I've had this plant for like a good, what, eight years? It's never moved, never reseeded, but that's, that looks an awful lot like that, doesn't it? Okay, I'm fine with it as long as it doesn't spread and take over the entire yard. The variety is not supposed to do that. This is a Lespedeza thunbergii, I think the variety is Volcano. Uh, yeah, it's not supposed to be one of the ones that spreads and takes over. But I mean, I guess if that's all it's done in a decade, that's not, that bad. I need to shut up with all that. This isn't a garden tour. Hookahs, I think that'd be pretty right here. It's a shady spot. It'll brighten it up. It might be too shady. Oh, I got way ahead of myself. I have to clear all the stuff out in front of there before I can even get to that. This pot's going to go over there. Shermanthes will get spread out. I'm thinking the pothos I'm going to put on the back of the wall and let them come over the front. I did that last year, but they didn't do great. I think it's because I had them too far down there. If I have them further over here, and I think they'll do better right there with some more light. This one does match the pots that are over there in the driveway, so maybe I'll move it. Ah, we'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna start moving some stuff around and see what I come up with. About four minutes later, and it's starting to rain, so we're gonna have to wrap this one up for the day, or at least until it stops raining. There's a lot more mess under here than I thought there was going to be. I'm gonna have to pull this stuff out, all of it. All of it's gotta come out. I have to get everything out of there and scrape and pull and dig it. It'll be worth it in the long run. It's been a long time since I've done that. You like these pots? I love those. I think those look nice together. We're just gonna come back with a before and after. Here's the before, or the before was, I guess, when this video started, and it was a mess. And now, after. Am I standing in the right spot? Did I do it? Did, did it pull it off? It's a few days later. Oh, this weather. Warm and cold and then rainy and then dry and the forecast says it's raining all week and then it's like 20 minutes later it says it's going to be bone dry. So it took a couple of days. All the plants are out now. These aren't all my plants. This is just one area. This isn't how it's going to be staying either. This is just, I, I don't remember if I explained it because it's been a few days since the beginning of the video. The plants have to go into shade before they can go into sun. So I just wanted a spot where I could keep them all together, let them adjust and move them. So the ones that are the most delicate are the ones that I've noticed bleach out the fastest from the sun. They're all over here in this corner. And then I have another spot that I'll show you where I have some more. So this is just, it's, it's just a big old mess, but at least everything's together and not strung out all over the patio. Edanella seems happy, still has those crispy leaves from the heater, but um, it just kept growing and flowering throughout the entire winter. 
So uh, even though the leaves got crisped up, I would still say it must have been pretty happy. The size of that inflorescence, the thing's huge. Prince of Orange, y'all have seen that. The uh, Monstera that's back here, this one, it always, it just throws a fit every time I move it inside and outside. So it's gonna have some yellow leaves on it for, I don't know, a couple weeks. It'll push out new growth, no big deal. It has vines that go, I don't know, probably 10, 15 feet worth all over the place. Dracaena reflects I think we saw that before. With this spot, I ended up pulling out all the old pottery I didn't want. I only kept a couple of big ones, which you can't even see right now. It's a big blue one over there, and then I moved the urn that was it was back there. And I had talked about it being very fragile. That's over here. There's the urn. Surrounded by plants, so you can't even see it. But again, it's not how it's going to stay. Eventually, over the next few weeks, things will be moved around into spots where they can take more sun, and this will get open back up, and I'll be putting some annuals and some other things over here to brighten it up and get things looking more colorful. The main thing is that it's clean, the plants are put away. That's all I was really going for here. All the little guys down front, begonias, trio stars scattered from down here and then up around that reflexa, the begonia, macalata. Love the flowers on those. Supernum pinatum, uh, super blue, that one right there. Kind of thirsty. I do need to give everything a pretty heavy watering. It's 93 right now. It's pretty toasty. And they got a light water this morning, but I don't think it was quite enough. I have an orchid there that needs a repot. It's, it's on the struggle bus. Anthurium and uh, a philodendron giganteum. There I got them. All need repots. That's why they're up there, so I won't forget about them. And they're a little bit safer from the dog traffic up there, too. The false Aurelias over there. I have the Dracaena marginata tucked back in there. I have some of the pothos up here on top of the wall. Don't know if they'll be staying there, but... Actually, kind of works for right now, so I don't hate it. But I want to space them more evenly if I'm going to keep them there. Did a big prune on the thematophyllum, the philodendron. I it is hot. I'm sorry, y'all. Philodendron bipinatifidum, which is now thematophyllum bipinatifidum. I told y'all how that got some sun scorch and a little bit of cold damage on it, so I got most of the old foliage off. It'll bounce back and be okay. Got the uh, ficus over here, just hanging out. It's just a catch pot that doesn't need to stay that way. Move the other blue planter up there. They're not even right now, but I realize that I'm going to have to shift this path. So when I shift it, I'll move those around and maybe get something symmetrical planted up into two of those. I don't really know yet. Still figuring a lot of the things out because I just, you know, the main thing was just getting all the plants moved out. Maxillaria tenufolia, coconut orchid. Love this plant. It's where it goes every year and it always seems happy there. My cactus. I was moving plants around a while ago and I heard a little crash, like something fell on the ground. Turned around and Turbo had a bunch of air plants in his mouth and I was like, what? And I remembered, oh yeah, when I moved the plants out, I stuck a bunch of my air plants in the bottom of this pot with this Yucca Rostrata just to get them outside. It's just easier to pile them up there. And I also had my cactus in there and uh, the pot was just laying on the ground. No cactus to be found. It was just sitting there. I picked up the pot and I looked at him and I was like, um, what did you do? And he did the thing where he was like, oh no, I didn't know I did something wrong. And then I, oh, you sleepy baby. Turbo, come on. Turbo. Turbo. Wow, that doesn't happen very often. All right, turbo's done. I looked around for the cactus for a while, and then I eventually held the pot up to him. I said, okay, where is it? Where is it, turbo? And he sniffed it, and he bolted, went right through there, and led me right to it. He just ran up to it. It was back there in the lawn, and he just stood there and stared at it. I was like, whoa. I was very impressed. Didn't know he was that smart. So it's always fun when we can communicate with the animals like that. Okay, I thought I had the spot ready to film. <laughs> Apparently not. Knocked a couple things over. Have more little things that are more delicate to the exposure. This is good light for them. Silver lady ferns over here. And then the alocasia, or really probably caladium helo beauty. A begonia that needs to be repotted. An aloe that needs to be repotted because it won't stand upright. Black varnish pseudoranthemum overwintered wonderfully. That's, that's all there is to say about that. Some orchids, another epiprenum, the yucca, which normally goes on the other side of the patio, but I thought that this spot would be better for it to adjust to the sun. I mean, that's the theme for everything. It's just where things are staying for a little bit while they adjust to the sunlight. Bromeliads hanging up here from the lamp post. They have thinned out a lot, and that's what they do over time. It's been a few years. I've probably reached a point where I need to divide and repot, but. I just don't want to. I kind of like the wild look with them. And it looks neat at nighttime when the light's on them. And as these get more sun, these are fireballs. They just were very low from my grow lights during the winter time. When more light hits them, they'll get nice and red. It'd be really pretty here. They're not going to get a ton of light right here, but I think they should still color up at least a little bit. Bismarckia. I don't, not like the most attractive place to put it, but I think I'm going to sink that pot into the ground over there. But I'm going to wait because next week, no, the week after next, this will be gone. There will be a new 
palm tree here, the Alexander palm, and things. Everything's gonna get torn up and be messy. So it's like, I'll just wait. I'll just wait and do that in a week or two when it's time to tear the spot up. There are some fun things happening in the garden over here. Lots more gingers are coming up. I know we're supposed to be doing the houseplants and tropicals right now, but the gingers and cannas, they're looking great. All of the hardy gingers, the zinger, we need to go down there. You see it? Look at it. There's some more right there. And they go all the way down. Every single one of the gingers that got planted late last fall are coming up. And those were the ones where I was like, I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna come up because they got planted so, so, so late in the season. And uh, they're only marginally hardy here. This one's coming up the least amount. There's least amount of sun there, so that's no surprise. Yeah, I was, that made me happy seeing those pop up there because really this is better if you wanna plant the hardy gingers, if you're in zone six. It's good to do that in the spring and give them a season to establish themselves and not throw them in the ground and. I don't even know, what, what was it, like late September, October that I got those planted? And they had like little to no rhizome. They had tiny little root balls. But here they are. They survived. They had a lot of mulch on them. That should be really pretty here in a few weeks. My best to resist this turning into a garden tour here of the Fuchsia Gartenmeister. I had to give this a very heavy prune because it was just covered with mealybugs. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to cut off all the stuff that has the mealybugs on it and then give it a spray. It needs to fill back out anyway, so... It's kind of bare. I went and just stuck it right in the sun. So it's going to bleach out a little bit, but since it's just got a cut back, I don't really care because it's going to bush right back out. Croton, that was there, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. The yet, no, 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 Dracaena Draco. Put that over here. It's helping to shade Mr. Freckles. Look at Mr. Freckles. Oh no, I put him in the shade. I forgot. I didn't have Mr. Freckles, the Freckles Croton, right under the grow lights like I usually do because it was just such a sturdy Croton. I was like, I'm going to stick you over in the corner. You're fine. And it was fine. did great but that it didn't acclimate it quite. It's okay, it needed a prune and a repot. It's gonna be fine. Look at the Eureka palm. Look, can you even see it? It is so incredibly full and lush. It just loved life this winter. I have it surrounded by other pots and things just to help kind of anchor it in place. Month of May and June, things get pretty intense with the winds and the storms. So I wanted to make sure it was surrounded by some heavier things until it like gets heavier and watered in. That's what I'm trying to say. And the pot will get heavier and all that. It doesn't matter. It just looks nice. It'll be even better when it puts out another frond there that, that wonkiness bothering anybody. I don't like it. It needs to even out. The underplantings are looking good. The canes on those trunks, nice and firm and healthy. Very happy with this. I mean, I'm always happy with it, but it's really coming to its own over the last couple of years. Now that the trunks are starting to get bigger, seeing more rings on them, that always makes them look more attractive. And as this gets more sun, that'll start to yellow up and get that pretty yellow color. It's gonna bleach out some too. I talked about this either in this video or in another one, I can't remember. I'm sorry, hopefully I'm not repeating myself, but um, it takes forever to harden these off, to acclimate them into full sun, the Eureka Palms. Same thing with the Croton. Yeah, we talked about this. I don't know if it was this video or not though. Anyways, it's, I generally just go ahead and put it in the sun, because otherwise it takes like two and a half months. It, I, don't, I don't have that time. It, it'll be fine. The foliage will redden up kind of like this right here. It doesn't usually turn white. And uh, there's enough on the inside that should stay sheltered in green that I don't I don't think it's going to bug me. Pretend you didn't see anything over there. That's that's for the next video. The garden tour. It's for the garden tour. Mother and daughter Croton over here. And then I still have a gorilla cart full of plants that I need to distribute. I'm going to do something over here. I'm going to pull some things out and clean it up and make a area for the smaller plants that I want to keep. I am thinking though, I'm probably gonna purge some of my smaller plants because as I was cleaning them out or bringing them out from the garage, from the growth space into the backyard, there were several that were just like, why do I have this? I don't even like this plant. I used to, but you know, we get tired of them over time. I don't really think that applies to anything in here. These are the heliconias, elocaceas, some gingers that are coming up. Lots of little things. I like everything that's over here. It's just, there are a couple. There was a peperomia and a, uh, a ficus that was like, I don't, I don't know. It's not doing anything for me. It's taking up space. Oh, and then the gloriosum over here with the calatheas that were in the self-watering pots. Wanted to make sure that those were underneath the umbrella because you know, they don't have any drainage in their containers. They're all looking good. A few mealybugs on them went through and smashed them. Just did it by hand. I have the variegated hibiscus just sitting right here because I'm still kind of trying to figure out what to do with it. I'm uh, probably going to repot it here in the next day or two and this is just where I've been keeping all the things that need to be repotted. I mean, there are things that need to be repotted everywhere, but I have several plants that are right in this spot that need it more soon than some of the others do. So that's what's going on there. Oh, and then the Monstera, the tie, that's over here. See it? There it is. I need to restake it. It's fallen over. Things are kind of windy out here, and if I don't get that staked up properly, it is just going to break. I had it originally turned this way, and then I noticed that the morning sun was hitting it. So now it's just hanging out right there. It'll end up back over there in the shade. That's just where I stuck it last night because I wanted to get it outside and get it done and get it outside and the drip is running over there. That was the best spot for it for right now. 
like the next week or so. It's an improvement down there. Y'all didn't really see it, but just yesterday, really even this morning, there were plants all the way from right here, down there, up and around, all over that table and down to that glider. But you can't, we were just over there. You get it. You saw it at the beginning of the video. So things are opened back up. Still want to do a little bit of rearranging and make some space for things. Either the table, the lounges, or the glider. One of those things needs to come down here. It's way too busy down there. I can worry about that another time. I'm just happy to have the plants outside. It feels so good to be seeing my babies, enjoying the sun. Sun and the fresh air. There's still, I know I still need to handle this, but I'll get to it. It's hot. I don't feel like taking on that project over there right now. Do that tomorrow morning or something. It was one of my favorite days of the year. We get to get all the house plants and tropicals outside and have the garage emptied out. Also, I realize it's not empty. I haven't brought the succulents out yet. Remember I had them up on the top shelf in there? It's kind of out of sight and out of mind, which is fine for succulents. They did okay up there, but I have to remember that those are up there. I'll bring those out when I get some more things put away and make some more room. It's going to be a shuffle for a couple weeks, which is fine. I enjoy that. And over here in front of this fan, try and cool off. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Don't forget to comment down below, say hi, what's going on in your gardens, getting your house plants moved outside. Again, don't know if I talked about it. Uh, nighttime temperatures in the 50s. I prefer daytime temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, preferably 80s when I move the tropicals outside. And of course the VIP, Iguana's outside. It's getting a new enclosure here fairly soon. This thing's really outgrown this one. I'm gonna go now. Next video coming out Saturday, gonna have a big plant haul. Lots of fun, colorful annuals. Can't wait for everybody to see what's going into the garden this year. And of course, as always, and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Don't lick my lens. Bye bye.